October 2011, Leroy, New York. A high school girl named Katie wakes up from a nap one afternoon and notices that something is not quite right. Her chin is repeatedly jutting forward on its own, her face begins to contract and contort against her will. Seemingly out of nowhere, she is twitching and making strange noises with no way to stop. The symptoms are on and off for a few days, but after a few clinic visits, the doctors diagnose Tourette's. And for a moment, it seemed that was that. Two weeks pass. A friend of Katie's and a fellow cheerleader awakens from a nap with the same symptoms, except the tics are much more centered in her arms. Two weeks pass. Another member of the squad, this time someone who had only recently moved into town, falls victim to the same spasms, the same vocal outbursts. And before long, this seemingly contagious bout of Tourette's spreads to a 6th, 7th, 8th, 12th, and 15th student. Within two months of the first case, 20 people are now stricken with the same condition. And now, this is beyond just the cheerleading squad, it's affecting girls in different social circles all across the school, even a boy and one 36-year-old woman in town. The Tourette's is spreading at an alarming rate, however Tourette's is not contagious. Fast forward a month, November 2011. You're at your buddy Ryan's house playing some Red Dead 1. Instead of yeet, you're both yelling Fusro Da every time you do literally anything. TikTok by Kesha is playing in the background and you just rented Captain America from a red box because the blockbuster down the street closed a few months ago. And as you suggest to Ryan that he turn up Kesha because you simply can't get enough of the sound equivalent to Pop Rocks and Mountain Dew that is her voice, somewhere out in the world, an anonymous rumor on pastebin.com is festering. This rumor claims that in the spring of 1996, over 200 children in Japan were all compelled to commit gruesome suicides after hearing the unsettling chiptune melodies of the Lavender Town music from Pokemon Red and Blue. Allegedly, others suffered nosebleeds, severe headaches, or became irrationally angry and emotional. The story goes that high-frequency binaural tones within the song that are inaudible to adults were the cause of the children's bizarre behavior. As a lot of you probably know, this was the beginning of the infamous Lavender Town Syndrome, a creepypasta or internet ghost story of completely fabricated events that never actually took place, or at least there was no proof of. However, this was more than just an unsettling story. For the better part of two years, the internet was obsessed with the likes of Lavender Town, Gary's Raticate, Missing No, Buried Alive, the Pokemon Shock Incident, and everything in between. What began as a small post on pastebin.com soon spread to 4chan, Reddit, and eventually found itself being covered on YouTube, with landmark videos from The Gamer from Mars, Jay Witz, and Epic Nachos, just to name a few. And like anything interesting, the internet did a little improv strat called Yes And, and piled on quite a bit of variations to the story, and even went so far as to dig up evidence for the legitimacy of this syndrome to make it more convincing. I'm not here to add to that pile of theories, I'm here to take a look at the why. What was the cognition behind these events? Why was the internet so obsessed with such a twisted rumor? Why did so many people believe it? Why did it give me headaches to listen to the Lavender Town music after all these years? And why did I have a friend once tell me that re-listening to the song legitimately made him look out a third floor balcony and suddenly realize that he could jump if he really wanted to? And what the hell was going on with those poor girls in New York? How did they tie into this? Were these folks suffering from some form of contagious twitches caused by environmental toxins in Leroy? Or were they all just faking this for the media attention and Twitter followers? Well, much like what your significant other wants for dinner tonight. It's not that simple. What it's do you want? But that's probably a good place to start, because what was occurring in the town of Leroy is a very isolated yet extreme form of what I believe was occurring across the internet during the whole Lavender Town frenzy. Flashback to 1970. You and Ryan aren't around yet, but your parents are seeing in the news that 23 train cars were derailed and spilled over 2,000 pounds of cyanide crystals and around 30,000 gallons of the solvent trichloro... Tri tri 
trichlor uh, TCE just outside of Leroy, New York, contaminating two wells. This was cleaned up and in reality has caused very few long-term issues for the citizens of Leroy, other than a pretty beefy stench for a bit. Mm, I smell sh but as the Tourette's incident began to pick up speed in 2011, the most accepted explanation by the families and by the town was the chemical spillage that something in the ground had surfaced and was causing this illness. Which I think we can all understand. If you spill 30,000 gallons of something I can't pronounce in my backyard, I'm blaming you for everything that's wrong with my life. Dry skin after shower? Government spillage. Dog threw up at 3 a.m.? Government spillage. Crippling self-esteem issues? Dinkelberg. So when people started catching Tourette's like anime characters catch pneumonia after more than 30 seconds in the rain without an umbrella, it became apparent that this could be something in the water or the air. The only problem is, looking at this factually, there's no way 40 years after the spill that suddenly now this is affecting kids and specifically high school girls. And since Tourette's is truly not contagious, there was no good explanation for how this was happening. And this was something the doctors overseeing all this had in mind when they made a very, let's say, controversial diagnosis. Conversion disorder which is essentially when someone is experiencing a stressor or a trigger that is manifesting or converting itself into physical symptoms. Blindness, paralysis, numbness, even tics that are occurring due to something that would ordinarily not cause those symptoms. A good way to think about it is stage fright. Shortness of breath, sweaty palms, heart racing, these are all symptoms that are manifested due to stress, but not a disease, virus, or disorder. In the case of these high schoolers, it was about a stress combined with the idea that the toxins in the water could be causing this to happen to anyone and the fact that it was happening to so many others that caused the symptoms to occur. This is a classic case of a mass psychogenic illness where members of a group all begin to experience similar symptoms that originate unconsciously and have no real medically explainable origin. These girls weren't faking anything. Their minds were convinced that there truly was some foreign illness from toxins in the water and so the stress took the form of the symptoms seen in their friends, which in turn convinced and stressed more folks and well, you can see how that cycle would just repeat itself. But you should know that all these years later, they are all doing much better and are almost totally free of the symptoms save for the original girl who legitimately has Tourette's a kernel of truth and something else just believable enough to twist that truth can go quite a long way together. Tourette's truly isn't contagious, however the symptoms behind it, much like the symptoms of Lavender Town Syndrome, can find other ways to travel from person to person in a group. And if you happen to be someone who is fascinated with this deliciously twisted creepypasta, it's entirely possible that you experienced something eerily similar to the girls of Leroy, but on a much less drastic scale. Real quick, I want to explain something about the Lavender Town music. I highly recommend headphones for this part, but be warned, this is going to hurt your ears. There won't be any sharp, loud, or sudden noises, but you will feel some discomfort. I want to tell you about a type of frequency called pseudotones, which was recently found to cause some pretty intense pain in the eardrum and nerves leading to your brain after only a few seconds of exposure. Though it's barely audible, it worsens over time, and you've been hearing it in your headphones for the past few seconds. It's probably causing a lot of pain, only getting worse as time ticks away, slowly pounding at your eardrums. Except it's not. You shouldn't be feeling any pain. There's no pseudotones. There's no such thing as pseudotones. And unless you recognize this example I pulled from this old CGP Grey video or knew where I was going with this, you probably did really feel a pain in your ears. This is due to something called the nocebo effect. Essentially, the belief that something is going to cause you to feel pain or the effects of a symptom is enough to actually make you experience it. Nocebo is the evil twin brother of the placebo effect, where sugar pills, for example, will make you feel better based on expectation alone, except in this case, when the doctor tells you this is going to hurt or cause these symptoms, the medication typically does. There's a host of studies I've listed below if you want more info, but placebo and nocebo both work because of the assumed authority of the doctor prescribing the medicine. If a doctor tells you something, you're usually going to believe them unless you're one of those anti-vax people, in which case, please look up a little thing called confirmation bias and reconsider your beliefs. Now, I don't think I need to tell you, dear viewer, that the internet is not to be regarded at the same level of credibility as your doctors. 
but sometimes an idea can have just enough truth involved to cause the nocebo effect to take place. It is true, after all, that certain frequencies are only audible to younger ears. And although the rumor that Game Freak changed the frequencies of Lavender Town in subsequent releases after the original incident largely remains a rumor, it's not unrealistic to think that the media can unintentionally harm children. There was this part in the Dino Senshi Porygon episode of the original Pokemon series, which I've censored, because it legitimately sent over 600 people to the hospital for seizures due to the speed of the flashing colors. This seemingly innocent television show about friendship and teamwork harmed people. What's to say the game can't do exactly the same? What's to say the chemicals aren't to blame for what's happening to my classmates? What's to say it can't happen to me? Maybe, just maybe, there is something to be concerned about here. And this is exactly what a ton of people were experiencing when the Lavender Town creepypasta was in full swing. People were getting headaches, reporting strange thoughts, and legitimately getting spooked by this bizarre story that did have a hint of truth behind it. And the uncanny sounds of Lavender Town's theme only added fuel to the fire. In the comments, I literally had a thousand people say that it gave them headaches. And look, even if you were a skeptic then and comment on this video that you never once believed or felt anything regarding Lavender Town Syndrome, I think you know deep down that at some point, at least for a moment, you second-guessed your skepticism. And if you insist you never did, be sure to let me know in the comments so that you can claim your superior human medal. Some of us want to be fooled, and that's one reason we saw people fabricate audio files of Lavender Town's music to show ghosts and messages when ran through a spectrogram. And of course, actually being able to download those files and do it yourself only made it feel more real. But that's the one thing that made this story so compelling. It was Pokemon. We all grew up with it. We all recognized the song. We could go listen to the track on YouTube. We could download and try that spooky spectrogram. It was almost effortless to interact with, and most importantly, it was everywhere. Okay, gonna need you to put your humble pants on for this one. Be honest here. Have you ever in your life believed that we humans only use 10% of our brains? Assuming you're a human, of course. Shout out to the meerkats that watch the show. But have you ever believed that? I know I have. Thank God the movie Lucy came out and made me go... Wait a minute! It's very false in case you didn't know, but if you have ever believed this, it's probably due to something called the illusory truth effect. Back in 1977, a study by Hashner, Goldstein, and Topano had subjects rate how confident they were that a list of statements were true, and then brought them back to do this over and over for the next few weeks. Confidence in the statements that were repeated from week to week increased over time, while confidence in non-repeated statements remained steady. In other words, the more the subjects heard something, the more they believed it to be true, regardless of its validity. And this is exactly what drove the toxin rumors and the Lavender Town Syndrome to feel so compelling. Rumors spread fast, especially when it's something that involves fear, and the more people talk about it, the more it shows up on your timeline, the more it's repeated, and the more we humans will naturally feel that it's true. Meerkats, you guys are immune to this. Stay off Twitter. Humans, though, I can feel your skepticism here. You might think that this illusory effect doesn't exactly work if someone knows up front that something is true or false. After all, if 10 people come up and repeatedly tell you that Kesha is actually your mom, you're not going to suddenly believe that. Knowledge trumps the illusory truth, right? Well, you'd be surprised. In 2015, some researchers at Duke, Vandy, and NC put this to the test. They hit folks with four types of statements, things they knew to be true, things they didn't know to be true, things they knew to be false, and things they didn't know to be false. And in all four conditions, when the statements were repeated over time like the original study, they were typically rated as true much more often than if they were presented only once. Even if folks knew something to be false, many subjects still second-guess themselves after hearing that statement over and over. Even if you knew Lavender Town was just a creepypasta, the repeated exposure could still tempt you to think twice about what you think you know, which of course is the beauty of any good urban legend. That doubt causes you to keep digging for answers, and the curiosity becomes morbid. 
Illusory truth effect works because the sensation of recognizing something is often confused with the sensation of validity in that something. Tie that in with some good old informational influence since every meerkat around is talking about it and you might feel like you're missing out on something important or even dangerous if you don't tune in. Well, that was a really long-winded way to say that we were obsessed with all things Lavender Town because the human mind is highly suggestible and can generate anxiety, fascination, and even physical symptoms if you feed it something just convincing enough to create the illusion of authenticity. The internet nine years ago was a different place than it is today, but the reverberations of the Lavender Town creepypasta will be felt in internet culture for years to come. Not only because it could be experienced firsthand through Nocebo, but because this story took an innocent memory of days playing Pokemon as a child and perverted it, mangled it into something disturbing, unsightly. The nostalgia is corrupted, changed forever. Everything I've mentioned today is simply tendencies. Not everyone felt the effects of the Lavender Town Syndrome, not everyone fell for my nocebo example, and not everyone is as susceptible to the illusory truth effect. But for some, this may explain a lot. I'm sure some of you can imagine, and some of you don't have to imagine, feeling like Lavender Town Syndrome had really affected you in some way, and then suddenly feeling an obligation to tell or even warn a friend. And if you can imagine that, it's not hard to see how mass hysteria can begin with just one post, or even just one person. My friends, my amigos, my compatriots, my fellow weebs, we have done it. This channel has hit 100,000 subscribers and that is all thanks to you. I usually say thank you at the end of these videos, but genuinely, Words can't describe what this milestone means to me and what a journey it has been to get here. So, thank you. I hope you enjoyed our random dive into this dated creepypasta and saw it from a different perspective than you may have in the past. Lavender Town is a piece of internet history and I knew I had to leave my mark on it even if I'm like nine years too late to the party. What are some of your memories of the Lavender Town Syndrome? Let me know down below and a massive thanks to the lovely meerkats over on Patreon who make this channel possible. If you're interested in bonus content or appearing in the credits like you see here, go on over to Patreon and for a dollar a month you'll get exactly that as well as my sincerest gratitude. Until next time guys, take care and have a damn good one. Thanks. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Just like really hardcore crack.